Chef Big Dog up all night cooking. You like it? Yeah. yeah. Right. We're going to cook like this. You're the best chef that I ever worked with. Here and now, let's get this straight. Are you planning on altering the menu? The fact is, you work for me. All right, good talk. Let me get back to work. We're being reviewed by the most important critic in the city. So we cook my menu, subject closed. The review. Uh, it's up, it's up. Here we go. His dramatic weight gain can only be explained by the fact that he must be eating all the food sent back to the kitchen. Hi, John. Welcome to Shortlist.com. Hi, thank you. So, Chef, uh, it seems to me it's a very personal film. It's certainly, if not the most personal, it's definitely the most independent since Swingers. That oh, for done. sure, yeah. Was it, in that sense, a, quite a cathartic film to make? The, the, the whole experience of making Chef, of writing Chef, putting it together and releasing it and even promoting it has been really uplifting for me. Uh, I don't know if, if, if cathartic is, is the right word because it wasn't like I had uh, something inside of me that had to be released. It's more that I got to play uh, in a way that I hadn't been able to. There's a, a freedom to it. There was a sincerity. Uh, the challenges that befell us were challenges of, of logistics, of making things for the money that we had, working with limited resources compared to the big movies that I had been working on. It sort of mirrors the, the chef he plays. Of course, he's renowned, then he goes back to his roots to rediscover yeah. his love. So you must have got a bit of that love through filmmaking again? I think so. I think that there, you know, I don't, I, it's a funny thing because your subconscious is really doing most of the heavy lifting on these things, especially the small ones where it just comes out fast. I wrote that script in a few weeks. I hadn't done that since Swingers. And so a lot of it you learn as you watch it and I guess the hope would have been that this would have been, I would have had the experience that, that the chef I play does when he opens his small food truck. Of course at the yeah. time I didn't know. This could have been the worst experience of my life. I saw early cuts of this film. I was like, oh, I wish I never, I wish I could just put this aside and go work on something else. Mm -hmm. But uh, I worked very hard on it, and, and it turned into something that I'm extremely proud of and mm -hmm. reflects, uh, you know, glimmers of who I am, but more importantly, I think, lessons that I think are important about mm -hmm. balancing mm -hmm. your family and your career and, and dedicating yourself to something that you feel uh, committed to that happiness comes from the process of engaging with your work and not necessarily the results and the results will come eventually and and really if I if I could come up with uh, a script every couple of years I would do films of the size I just don't have I'm not prolific like that I, I can't I must ask it on the back of that would you ever do a swingers uh, sequel would you ever do a maybe it's it seems so hard it's like with elf and with swingers they, they exist it, they belong to the audience now and audiences get mad when you when you do things like make sequels to something that they feel is their own. Would Vince be up for it, do you think? Uh, you think I, I want to work with Vince. I just worked on one called Term Life, and I, I definitely want to work with him again. He's a lot of fun to to bounce off of. Mm -hmm. We really it's like it's like playing with a musician that you've been in a band with your whole <laughs> life. You know, we really mm -hmm. we really uh, I get a big kick out of him. We both make each other laugh. And, and keep each other at the top of our game. Uh, I would do that, but but if, if I did a sequel to Swingers, I'd have to make sure that it, it didn't. Mm -hmm. I think, even though it's a separate movie, you don't yeah. want to take away from it. And there's something so special about mm -hmm. Elf, it exists just there in its own bubble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every Christmas, it's like, a, it's like <laughs> an ornament you hang on the tree and then put Definitely. away. Whereas Iron Man is, you know, it has made a lot more money. And speaking of Iron Man, I must yeah. go. I must mention the fact that Rob Downey Jr., co-star in Iron Man, of course, yeah. he directed, pops up in this film. Yeah, Robert's in this movie. Is it weird directing him playing another millionaire douchebag, or be it without the? No, suit? no. I like. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. He is. He is. Is he? Is he a Tony Stark type character in this? I, I guess he's got a lot of dough, and he is. And he is busting my chops. Uh, but that's what he brought to it. You know, I wrote a scene that was very general, and and through rehearsal and talking, we adjusted it, and he. You know, he, a lot of those words are his own, uh, but I knew the amount of freedom that he required. It was great. It was great to actually play opposite him and really be a scene partner, which I hadn't gotten to do yet. Mm -hmm. The first Iron Man movie, I was so busy trying to figure out how to make all of it work that the last thing I was worried about is my performance. The second mm -hmm. Iron Man movie, I didn't really work with him a lot, a little bit. I got to do some action stuff with Scarlet, that which was fun. <laughs> uh, but really, I was, you know, a glorified extra in that film. But uh, and in Iron Man three, I got to work with him a little bit because I wasn't directing. I got to yeah. think more about the performance. But this one, I actually got to go toe to toe, and 
do scene work with him, and it was great. How it do was you great. how do you stand with the Marvel universe now? Are you kind of yeah. done with that for a while? Would you like to go back to that and revisit it? Some I mean, I'm done with it as a director. I think unless you know, unless uh, circumstances got you know such that they really needed me to come back and 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 and, and strap on the guns again. <laughs> But I've, I've earned my status as, as, a, as an elder statesman there, and uh, I'm happy to be an executive producer on Avengers 2. I'm going to stop by the set. Joss is doing a great job. Mm -hmm. I, I check in with the cast. I'm part of the family. But the actual day, day in, day out grunt work of actually making the film, uh, once you've done it, I did it twice back to back. Mm -hmm. I've never worked that long on, on, a, on, a, on a project in my life. They're really kind of both... Yeah part of establishing the Marvel universe and and mm. you know it was like it was like shooting the pilot for a TV series yeah, yeah, yeah. It, you know although they were two separate projects mm. they felt like one continuous one there wasn't really a breath of air for me in between them yeah. and that's a lot to ask uh, and I don't know that I have anything they're hiring such you know fresh talent with n different tones and points of view that complement what we did I think they're doing a great job and and you know it's, there's no crisis happening there's no fire to put out and so I'm very happy for, for Can I just say, on behalf of everyone who sees Chef uh, yeah. and goes yeah. on to see it, I hope you never do a blockbuster again because it's brilliant. It's <laughs> That's very nice. It. On that note, thank you, and thank you so much. Cheers. Thanks so thank much. You. That got me a knife. What is that? He says he misses you. I get to touch people's lives with what I do, and I want to share this with you. Mm. Who's hungry? Be careful. Oh, you're so sexy in that bandana. I want your big platano. What? Woo! <laughs>